Welcome back, traders and investors. Uh, we have snuck in a fourth guest today, and that's Sean Udall. He's the tech stock strategist. Sean, how you doing today? Good morning, bear market. It's a bear, is it a bear market in the <laughs> overall market, or is it just a bear market in stocks that you own? No. Um, you know, I... There's there's a couple that are biting me in the you know what kind of kind of pretty good but no I I, I have been calling so here here's my theme this morning and I you know there there's a little jest there but I I'm not joking at all I mean we're we're in we have been in the stealth bear market as I think I've said on on your program a couple times and I'd, I'd say we've been in the stealth bear market for the better part of six months now. Um, you know the averages haven't put in that quote unquote ten percent correction but. I think you probably look at numbers like this, 20, 25% of the Russell 2000, or wait, I'm sorry, the, the average stock in the Russell 2000 is down 25%. So uh, there's, a, there's plenty of names out there to hunt and fish for. I, I actually like a lot of the opportunities right now. You know, I mean, this has been a kind of a frustrating year for me because I've pretty much, I like to make as much money uh, investing in positions and holding things and letting things work um, and doing kind of longer term tactical trades. I've kind of had to turn into a day trader this year and I don't really like being a day trader. I, it's, it's, to me, it's not very fun. I don't like cutting positions super, off super fast. I don't like, you know, I don't like having to kind of just, you know, have really strict stop losses and things like that. But hey, I can play that game if I have to. Uh, Keynes had an expression, the market can stay irrational longer than I can stay solvent. Well, I got one way better than Keynes. My liver can stay functional way longer <laughs> than the market can stay irrational. So I'm just fine. I'm just waiting for, um, I, you know, I don't like to say, I think the setups are pretty good right now. I think it's, it's a matter of just kind of picking your spots now and really waiting for really good fat pitches. And just as an example, I mean, GoPro midweek this week, was trading, I was able to get grab some of that uh, under 55, like in the mid-54s mid, mid 54s one day. Well, now, again, I could two days later, I could take it off at almost 10. I'm, I'm trying not to take it off because I really think I can see this thing back to at least 63, 65, but I have a trailing stop on it, and I'll take it off if I have to, right? But that's the kind of stuff we have to do right now. It's a grinder market. It's a stealth bear market. I don't know if I don't know if the averages have to go all the way down to ten percent. Hey, your your opinion on that is as good as mine. All right, so let's talk about the news coming out of Twitter this morning about uh, perhaps getting a you know uh, three different people to take over the company. I know you've been holding in there and that stock. Uh, boy, it's unbelievable support here at that twenty eight fifty level. Is that you buying it there? And uh, what do you think about the potential? <laughs> <laughs> What do you think about? You're the only one. I've uh, been helping. Uh, you got me. I, I've been helping. I, I don't think I can really move that stock much. But I, well, so here's. I'd say there's two things. I'd say the Monday news on Twitter. See, today's news to me isn't that really exciting. Here, here's the Monday setup. Dorsey came in, bought a million dollars worth of stock. They signed the NFL deal, which for, okay, if if this wasn't a stealth bear market and Twitter wasn't in its own heinous huge bear market. The, the NFL deal probably would have been 5 to 10% to, let's call it a neutral to a bullish Twitter, right? Now, when you're in a bear market, good news, the good news is sort of scoffed at and it doesn't really push the stock up very much. But, you know, that, that NFL deal is a, is a very big deal. Um, so as far as today's news, you know, as far as board replacements and rumors, I, I still think Dorsey is going to be the, C, this, the CEO, um, so as far as three people, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Um, I think Dorsey's going to be the CEO, uh, you know, and then they'll, then they'll have the other guys that I think Bain will be the, uh, the COO. Um, so we'll see what happens. I, I don't, you know, I'm not so much thinking that naming the CEO is actually that big of a catalyst for Twitter. I think Twitter, again, they have the numbers you, you and I have talked about the quarter. They had one of the best quarters of any report, of any company that reported during the quarter, they just sort of slammed themselves in the face with this MAU negativity. So, you know, it's, it's pretty, and unfortunately for Twitter, uh, the stock is going to move on one thing near term. And that's if they can get some commentary that MAUs are kind of getting a little bit better, or 
if there is another revenue stream that's kicking in, i.e. If, if, if they can sign two more deals on top of that NFL deal, so I'm not sure what that would be. You know, I don't know if that would be another sports deal. I don't know if that would be another media deal. But if, if they can show, hey, there's another revenue engine that's about to kick in. By the way, Vine announced they had 10 million users the other day. So um, to me, Vine, the current Vine looks a lot like YouTube looked a number of years ago. Um, they, they've gotten to 10 million users really fast. Now, I mean, here's a funny question. Is, is Twitter even counting Vine and Vine users I, and, and Periscope? Maybe, maybe I mixed up Vine and Periscope. But to me, they're both revenue streams in the future. But is Twitter even counting Periscope as MAEs? I'm not so sure they are. But if they aren't, they should be. So I think they just have to message things a little different. I think if they focus people on the right things, and if there's any turn in MAUs, that's going to make the stock go up. What about the move over there at Google? Uh, our last guest was just like, this does nothing for anybody, but the owners of the company kind of mirrors the fact of everything that's going on over there. I mean, I thought that, you know, kind of the same thing when they went to Goog and Google, but, you know, it hasn't really had a uh, negative impact on the stock price. What's your appraisal of ABCD along with Goog and Google? Yeah, I... I even posted a video of the Jackson 5 and ABC 123 when I, when I heard that news. I put that on Twitter. Um, I, I mean, to me, that might have been the strangest stock move of the week, the, the fact that it went up so much. In fact, I mean, Google's kind of been a, been a very interesting stock. I don't know if just a bunch of shorts massively got negative on Google, and this has been one giant short squeeze since July 16th, you know, since the earnings day, because – so the, the earnings were fine, but the earnings weren't that great. You know, people, you know, their, their revenues were up 11 percent. Their earning, earnings beat, but they beat because they've missed. They had missed seven of the last nine quarters. So finally, analysts got enough religion, lowered numbers down enough. And so they finally beat a lower bar. Right. Th- then the stock almost goes back to, the, to those all time highs. Again, on, I, I'm, a, I'm in agreement with whoever your guest was. I, to me, Google's the same Google. Um, changing the structure, saying there's a thing called Alphabet, you know, I, I don't think it's a big deal. The, 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 here's the one thing I think there could be some validity in, in wanting the stock higher or just, a, excuse me, justifying it. it I, I could read the tea leaves and say Google might spin out YouTube as an IPO. So, so if, they, if they focus now and become sort of the Berkshire Hathaway of Silicon Valley, which I've been calling them since 2011 or 12, um, you know, if, 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 it's, if they really focus 100% on investing in M&A and growing the company that way and then spinning out prior deals, you could extract quite a bit of value. I mean, I think YouTube on a, as a standalone company, I think would, would be an IPO or a company that would trade somewhere in the, uh, you know, in the 40 to $50 billion um, valuation range. Now, I'm, I'm not sure that that value is fully reflected in the price of Google, but I'm, I'm basically with you. I think the stock is sort of fully valued. I mean, again, so people got super excited on Google's 11 percent growth, but they hate Twitter's 61 percent growth. I mean, we're just in a ba- you know, we're in a backwards market right now and we have been for a while. There's a lot of things out there that really don't make much sense. Uh, one quick uh, question here, just going back to the uh, Twitter, uh, you know, the news of Bob Pack. uh just one of our listeners wants to know, do you still think AOL Armstrong would be a candidate for the CEO? Well, I would. I, I don't know if I ever thought he was a great candidate other than I said the two guys from the out. So, so I've always said I hope Twitter keeps what I, you know, I was like Dorsey, and I hope they keep an internal person because I think that's better for the continuity of the company. However, if they were to get somebody from the outside, the two people, I would. Eric Schmidt was always my favorite. I still, I still would love to see them somehow bring in Eric Schmidt, even if they could bring him in on a board role or a consulting role or you know, so, some sort of C-suite position to help these guys. I think it would be massive. Um, I think he'd be a huge, huge hire. I think, I think Tim Armstrong would be great. Though. The only issue with Tim Armstrong is he's still, you know, he's still at AOL, and AOL just got bought by, uh, help me, I, I think Comcast. So um, the, the bottom line, AOL just got bought. He probably has either a non-compete or a contract with the company, which he'd have to get out of. But no, I, I, so I don't know how realistic it is. I would love to see Tim, Tim Armstrong 
as, as in the running for CEO. Uh, and if, again, if they were to hire somebody from the outside, I really only see two guys that I would rather see get the position than Jack Dorsey. And that would be Eric Schmidt and Tim Armstrong. Unfortunately, I doubt Tim Armstrong is available given the, um, given the recent deal uh, that the company got bought out. All right. We've been on the line with Sean Udall of the Tech Stock Strategist, uh, giving us his take on uh, potential shakeup in the C-suite here, or a new CEO decision coming out from Twitter. Sean, thanks a lot, and I think we're speaking to you in, again next week. Thanks for coming on on short notice. Okay, sounds great.